So as you can see then, this is a Mark 8 Transit. So we've got the base set up in the van. All these are actually locked up in the, in the locked up position. We've got the bolts in underneath the base, as you can see there, there, and under this one, um, and in that corner, obviously. But it says to turn it anti-clockwise. So as we turn, we can see that we can come round to anti-clockwise, and at the front of the base there, it just starts to rest on the carpet. But we can't spin it anymore because it's still resting on the front of the center part and here on the side of the um, A pillar. So we can't turn it anymore. I can't move it forwards or backwards now. So that is just jammed in there now. So I can try and come a different way and maybe bring it over a bit and I'll try some different maneuvers to try and get this round here. But I think you'll see every time it's kind of just catching everywhere that when we measured it has got a difference in height when you actually get it round and the only way I can actually manage to turn this is if I try and turn it clockwise um, and there's about an inch difference in height between the top plate and the clearance that you would need to get over that center part the only way I've managed to be able to do this is to turn it clockwise push it up into the vinyl quite hard and then it allows you to then spin it round on the vinyl but as you can see it's catching this back part here but that's the only way i can actually get this to physically turn in the opposite direction so i can get it back but as again like i say even from this part if we were to turn it anti if we'd have assumed we turned it anti-clockwise to start with if i now try and turn it clockwise which would be back to its original position as you can see it won't go anywhere because it's just locked on the back part and on the front part there so it physically you cannot turn it back that way the only way you can do that is to then turn it anti-clockwise push it right up into the part there so it will allow it to come round and then it's back in the original position so that was actually a video i made for the people who supply me with the swivel seat for my van and as I said in the last video that uh, I wanted to keep the double swivel seat that turned out not to be possible because as you can see there the frame just wouldn't turn I had to cut part of the carpet away or that thick liner away we measured and measured and it just was never going to work it, it, it just had never had no chance of spinning so um so yeah i sent it back <laughs> it's basically what i did i just sent it back to him um got a refund and i think the process was then i was thinking okay well i'm now gonna just gonna have to put a single swivel seat in there and I just hoped I could find a transit one but until that point I thought right I'll just get on then and carry on with the building of the bed so putting the main struts in the sides of the bed and got the support in um, again you can see there that I've put the runs top and bottom um, the horizontal ones and the vertical ones actually sit inside that it gives the bed a lot more structural rigidity and then I put in the um, ply on the sides of the van and you probably notice on this that I actually the middle one where the window is is actually just set back a, a few inches um, from the top and the uh, and the bed there's a, there is a reason for that it's how I, how I build the sides and uh, it made make sense in how it was going to overlap with regards to when I put the bulkhead in towards the kitchen. So both sides are like that. Um, but it, the finish looks better. So I did that on both sides. Got the lining on the top. Now uh, they're plying on the top. And the main structural framing for the bed. Measured it. And it is six foot in length. Which is handy because I'm five foot ten. <laughs> so I thought that's... It's okay, it's six foot. And at the time of getting to this stage, the DVLA said that the bed had to be six foot long, I think. But I think they've changed that now. 
Once I got the panels in and secured onto the sides, it was time for the four-way stretch to come out. So again, I was never coming back to this and to make nice edges, I put the um, carpet on um, and always made sure I've had a bit over on the side. So when I come to put the bulkheads on, I can almost nip the carpet so you never see an edge. Um, you know, like a flappy edge of a bit of carpet. So, you know, if I'd have put this on after the bulkhead had been in, you wouldn't have got so much of a nice edge between the carpet and the bulkhead. So I left enough so when I nip it in, get the bulkhead on, then I could always trim any excess of the carpet off from there. And the same as the bed, I actually went down and along the wood again, so it's tucked underneath. So when I actually eventually put the uh, thicker 18mm ply on there that, that would form the bed base, um, then you wouldn't see, again, you would never catch the carpet. The carpet can never lift off or untuck itself from getting caught up or anything like that. But I think that it's quite a neat job and to keep in with the sort of showing the frame of the van, so to speak, it sort of gives it nicer features rather than just seeing big straight sides of tongue and groove or something like that down the sides. I think for the effort it takes, and getting to that stage was, was not much really, to be fair. And this is basically what you do with a carpet. You, once you've done your um, ply pieces and they're at the right shape, they fit, they're perfect, great. As long as you leave a few mil, just a few mil for the carpet when you cover around the corners and the edges, spray it all, heat the cans up on, well, well, we, we were heating up near a wood burner, but I don't suppose that's totally correct. Um, but you just need to put them in the sunshine. That's what you need to do. Put your cans in the sunshine and then you spray the back of the carpet. And then, yeah, you just spray the back of the ply and just, you know, ease it on there and you can pull it about quite well. And once you get it up, the effect looks really nice. I mean, that looks dead square now. It's it's a real nice box. The, you know, the sides look just really good and, you know, some nice lines there. And if you take a bit of time, you can, you can really, you can really make a good job of it. Um, this is uh, doing, trying to do dub two sides of the carpet and these sections, they need to be carpet on both sides. But luckily again, how they was being nipped up, I could sort of, with one side go all the way round and down the sides of the frame and then just lay one on the back and then just cut as long as I cut a nice neat line across there we'll actually put it up to where it should be for the bit of the bed then you wouldn't really see it so that's without the carpet and then all I did is just stuck carpet on that side if that makes sense I don't know if that makes sense or not but it made sense to me also on this picture, what's good about this one is you can see that I'd put the overhead lights in there, the four overhead uh, lights. So when you turn the lights on in the van, the not the brake light in the middle, but the two lights either side of the brake light sort of come on and it looks really nice in the back at night time. Um, but yeah, so the main frame is in now, carpeted the cross member um, and the, you know, the actual back frame is in. I then bought a piece of this rubber strip that you can get I bought, you can buy it in metre length, so I bought an, this metre length, it was, I think it was like £10 a metre, <laughs> it's not cheap, but it's got like a, a metal, um, movable, uh, I don't know how to explain it really, maybe like a concertina -y kind of thing to it, so you can, you can mould it round, but again, needs heating, to use that, you need to heat it up, and get some heat into those strips, to get them more pliable, so they just fit round a bit more, that's the overhead bulkhead, I needed to work on this end really, so once I'd got it all, with the uh, sound deadening, as you can see on the top bit of the roof there, I'd sand over those back bits and then it was to get a piece of carpet in and I put one whole piece in there. I didn't do it in two halves, top and bottom. I just pushed it into the corner, sprayed it and worked it out as I come out, if you, if you like. Then got some Bentley stitch leather and made my template up for the front bulkhead. Then, um, again, same process, same process. Cardboard, then three more ply board and then your actual, your, um, what would be a furniture board if you want to use furniture board for it. I'll just use ply and then I'll want to cover mine with the Bentley stitch there. 
the um, side bits just shows on the door. I left the, I, originally I was going to cover that completely up and then uh, there just happened to be just a little pocket that I thought I can, I can maybe create something there. <laughs> so I started to make more work for myself and made this little cubby hole where you, uh, you know, I was going to line it all in carpet, which I've done now. And um, yeah, it's got the um, first aid kit goes in that section. So that's kind of once I'd covered the, leather covered that up with carpet there you can see it's just a little opening and that, now that's all carpeted in with the with the first aid kit in there it looks really smart it looks nice it's um yeah it looks good so i'm glad i did it it took a bit of effort i sh to be honest with you i probably shouldn't have done it it, it was more awkward than, than it should have been for a silly little box but it, now it's done it it, it it looks okay actually as it goes so again, uh, once I'd managed to get the bulkhead in and get some of the last wiring in for the overhead light, I could then get these final roof pieces in and completely um, go through with the top of my roof. The, the bit above the door was now carpeted um, and there was overhead lockers going on the right hand side as you're looking at it. So um, yeah, I could I could finally get these pieces up, which was great. Yeah, and it looks good. Oh, it was a different colour there, but it's not actually a different colour. But once I'd got that, I made sure I knew where Central was, so I could make sure it was nice and, and, and straight through the boat. Through the boat? Through the through the bus. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it carried on then, making the frame for the bed. So nice, sturdy wood there. Made nice, solid frames, used Craig screws to screw all together. So, yeah, it nips them in nice and tight and also glued all my joints as well. And then on this side of the van, this is where I was gonna have all my control panels for the electrics. I brought all the wires to this point, but I, when I vapor buried it all up, the wires and everything was all still behind there, but I just thought I'll cut them out later. So this is basically what we're doing now. We're opening up this section. Once I got this bed frame in, um, Andy knew where he could start to bring cables and that through then because technically he was in the garage. So um, yeah we could then get some of these cables through the wall. We just cut two little sections there because we could always take them back up. I didn't cut them off and throw them away. I just slit them three different sides and just lifted lifted it up so we could get the wires poked through and we got the solar coming through there and the 240 volt coming through and then all the 12 volt. Most of the van actually runs on 12 volt and the only thing I actually run off 240 now as as a rule of thumb is my tv if i use it because i just I stream through my phone so um yeah there's the bed frame you can now get a good grasp of what the bed size is going to look like what the cabin of the the bed is you know the cabin area of the bedroom is going to look like i didn't do the full wall of the camper there that's not a, it's not a solid structure and there's a reason for that, which again, I've said a couple of times, it'll, it'll come a, a bit relevant later. The reason why I didn't do that. Once I'd got the frame made, it was a case of putting the panel on and yeah, and, and getting it up. These are just uh, the, the base is on for the bed and he's got the main cabinet in for uh, my power hub. So this is where you can switch between inverter or 240 or 12 volt or whatever you want to do. Uh, the gas locker is just to the left there, so um, that's uh, accessible. There's my little boy helping. He's always a great help in the camper, especially with a hammer. It's, it's just what you need when you're trying to um, get on and build a camper. What you need is a two-year-old boy going, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> near a gas bottle, because it's dead safe in our garage. So, yeah, <laughs> the workshop is a safe place for a two-year-old child. Uh, there's a picture of the box that Andy's put in. It's, uh, you've got the 240 on the left, and you've got the 12-volt on the right. All, all lit up, the 12-volt panel there is, um, each fuse is... Um, got proper labels on that's quite early on obviously um and i've got a voltage monitor there with like a little switch beside it so i don't have to have that illuminated the whole time you can turn that on or off not that it makes too much difference but i uh, had that so you could do that um i went for uh, lpg gas so i wanted to 
fitment on the outside of the van so I could go to petrol stations and, and fill up with fuel. However, it turns out that's not quite as simple as you'd like to think. Uh, you'd think there's more petrol stations with LPG, and there isn't. So in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do that again. I've actually now bought a pigtail. I haven't used it because I've managed to find gas as much as I've needed. But yeah, I wouldn't do that again. But what I did do is I run um, a pipe at the back of the gas locker then, which is then goes to my water pump. So I bought a shore flow water pump and um, an accumulator. So uh, I've put that in line and then that's just teed off now, just ready to uh, go go through for the rest of the water system. And then Andy really started to crack on then once I got the water pipes in, as you can see uh, along the back there. And that uh, cassette is just where the toilet sat in. Um, furniture board is actually on in that picture. But Andy really started to be able to get on once I'd actually got to that point. Andy really managed to get on then and get the electrics in. So Sterling Power, DC to DC, got my inverter there. We've got the solar controller in the back there. Um, we just had a couple of batteries kicking around to actually power it up to start with but yeah that's basically getting um, you know looking to like she's nearly done there the electrics were pretty much in and he's done such a good job if you looked in there it looks amazing um it's just so tidy such a neat neat job so if you ever want anything done you need to speak to andy stockley at auto electric yeah i think he's auto electric calls himself so you need to go and see andy auto electric um, another mistake I might have made is, luckily for me, I don't use my camper much in the winter. However, what I decided to do was, rather to keep my garage space clear, I got a frame and I made a frame and I thought I'd have an underslung water tank. Um, for Not for drinking water, that was going to be separate. This is just for like showering and, and washing and stuff like that, you know, um, doing washing up and things like that. So, yeah, I've got one of these CAK tanks. They're based in Kenilworth, I think, up in Warwickshire. And they're not a bad tank, actually. I think this is like 75 litres. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good tank, actually. It's been quite a good tank, this one. I've had no problems with it while it's been on. I had problems with my last one that I had on my Iveco daily. It wasn't wasn't great. Um, but this one, this one's actually been quite good and it's quite sturdy. Managed to find a frame or, you know, part of the chassis of the van where you could fit this frame. And, uh, yeah, it was between, behind the spare wheel, where the spare wheel goes and the and the, axe, the rear axle of the van. And it fits in there lovely. It's, it fits in there really good size. So I made up some custom brackets and had to screw this into the chassis of the van by just holding it up there with trolley jacks just to get it right and had to kind of push it up. But once I actually managed to get it up tight, it was quite easy, it, it, you know, it's quite easy to sort of make some frames to sort of uh, put that up or drill some holes. There's a drill hole there that you probably can see where I managed to drill um, through into the chassis, but getting a bolt in there was, <laughs> that, that wasn't too easy. And I hate working underneath vans. It's horrible being underneath vans. Made some underslung um, like basket uh, hitches for them, if you like, so that they can so the so the tank could just sit in there. So when she's full, this the, these these um, ladder brackets, if you like, are, are what hold the tank up inside the frame. But it's dead sturdy. I've had it full up of water, and yeah, I've sort of kicked it around a bit, if you like, put a bit of weight on it to see if it will move, and uh, it's fine. It's uh, it works quite well being there. And that's just another picture, really, of some of the edges on the side of the bed. I, I use these, the Craig screw heads. So if anyone ever wanted to take this apart, it'd be a nightmare for them if we didn't have a Craig screw. But um, yeah, it's uh, just some of the joins now just look really nice. This is the top part of the bed. And I did this in uh, marine ply. I thought that would sort of be the best material to sort of do it in, really. But yeah, the bedroom really came on quite quick. And I really felt like once I'd done that, I could kind of get on and, and, and get the furniture board in for the back of the shower room 
and the side of the kitchen, which also included being the ends of the lockers that were going to be above the bed on both sides. So guess what came out? Cardboard and plywood. <laughs> so yeah, thin sheet of ply. Get it all drawn out. So it's the cardboard, draw the cardboard, draw the markings out. And then once you've got that out, you're going to be fairly close. But if you do it in cardboard first, it just it just makes the job so much easier. It takes a little bit longer, but the the results are just so much nicer. It's it's just it is a benefit having a workshop to do it. I've got to say, doing it outside, I can imagine would be a bit of a pain. You got to rely on good weather or things. Or, but luckily for me in the workshop, we're just able to lay just big pieces of of, of wood out, which is great. And then you know you can just manoeuvre around and things, and it doesn't matter if it's raining. And it was raining a lot when when I was building this part of the boat. So. Yeah, you know, just get them marked out and we bought a, a nice, and, and well actually that's a very good point, a really good jigsaw. They might be a bit more expensive, but I had a cheap jigsaw before I started doing this project and it, and Andy said, well I'm going to buy a new jigsaw, you can use that if you want. I was like, great, and it was brilliant, it's just, it's just definitely worth the money. Buy yourself, a, if I can give you one piece of advice buy a nice jigsaw because, and, and you'll go through blades like there's no tomorrow because you're cutting. But again, the results are much better. If a nice sharp blade and a nice jigsaw, you'll get so much better results when you're cutting wood, whether it's thick or thin, just take your time and you'll just work through it and you, you know, you, you'll get a much nicer finish. Yeah, um, a lot of the work I did, I actually bought um, a big 100mm sheet of Celotex actually and propped it up in between two stands. You can see them in the top right hand corner of that picture. I just stretched them out, stuck this 100mm um, bit of board out on top of it and it made a perfect big table and it's so light to carry around. So that's another good tip actually if you want another one. Get one of those and just make up a set of trestles for yourself. So yeah, there you go. That's the um, templates in. That's pretty much the back of the bathroom. Then a side panel in for the bathroom and the end of the um, kitchen. The middle bit there is actually where it's going to be your, um, the galley if you like. And on the top right hand of the bit of ply, that's um, the end of the locker. So that's come together. Then it was a case of, right, well, I've got to buy myself some <laughs> some really nice furniture board. Couldn't couldn't even decide what I was going to... I had no idea what sort of what I wanted as design-wise. And then I saw this one. And I think this is a Zobrano. And it's kind of like a matte kind of finish to it. But I like it. The only trouble with it being lots of stripes is you've got to match stuff up. But, yeah, it's really nice. It's lightweight furniture board. It cuts really well with a, with a sharp jigsaw. It's, it's, it's pretty good stuff. But with that furniture board in, it's a case of getting the flooring in for where the shower cubicle is going to be. Getting a frame made up, getting the wheel arch covered getting the sides all siliconed up so there's no damp going to get through from the shower room. Um, I stuck loads around that to try and make sure she was going to be sealed. Sat the toilet in and made sure she was going to be sitting in there fine. Got the shower cubicle. Uh, that's sitting on the floor of the... Um, on the floor of the camper. Um, so it's not going to move or anything but I still glued it to the floor as well I didn't just sit it on the floor I glued that in um, not at this stage though at the moment it was just sitting in ready to go I just wanted to make sure that I could get it right um, and yeah I then had to just make sure that I could get the um, wall straight so I got on this one I um, just put a template up put a straight edge up to the wall made sure it was right with the back wall because I knew the back wall was right and again if you always got one rule one wall that's right you can always work off of that you can always get like you know things but your floor will always be level your floor will always be straight so as long as you work from your floor if you can get a level and a straightness um you know off your floor you, you're always on a winner then I decided I was going to tile the bathroom <laughs> 
It was a bit of a mistake. Well, I mean, it looks great, but what effort that was. I mean, looking back, maybe I should have just got some of that uh, like plastic acrylic stuff, but I didn't. I actually tiled it properly. I mean, it looks lovely now, but yeah, probably a bit of a mistake. Um, then I got the worked onto the other side where the kitchen was going to be and I looked at um, you know how I was actually going to get the units how big the kitchen was going to be I knew I was going to have to come past the door a little bit so I was trying to work out how I was going to do that um, so yeah I knew where some of the switches were going to be I'd worked out the heights of the units and then once I'd got that in I then uh, had to find the other end of the locker so I worked out well I can bring the other end of the locker down there. So I clamped it into place um, and, you know, did the same thing, cardboard, plyboard, and then got it done in the furniture board. And the template, good tip again, the template I used for the first bulkhead, because my van is fairly the same all the way down the length of it, I could use the same templates three times. So the ones I used on the back, I used for the middle and I used for this end, if that makes sense. So other than a few little adjustments, my lockers were always going to be, um, you know, right, if that makes, you know, if that makes sense. Um, because, um, because yeah, um, yeah, you, you need to make sure they're right. Otherwise, you'll end up with cupboards that aren't, that aren't straight. Um, but that's really starting with the lockers, really. That was the next stage. Once I got out of the kitchen, I thought, OK, well, let's let's get the lockers up. So, again, just basic framing, but knowing where and taking enough photos that I knew where structurally it would be sound enough to screw into the lockers to the roof. So she screwed in not only to the sides, um, but it's screwed into the back and it's also screwed in to the roof of the van. So there's no way they're coming out. And you can see there on the left hand side, it was a bit further on that video, that, that picture, sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's on the left hand side. That's one of the finished lockers now with the, with the um, front on. And uh, that was working through. You can see also the, the bathroom has moved on. I'd got the side on the bathroom, the door weren't on. But I had LEDs, they were they were then put in underneath the lockers too. <clears throat> um, yeah, that was just a case of, you know, just again cutting out the plywood. When you get to this stage, just cut your plywood out and then, um, you know, your furniture board out. Um, and you're there, you know, doing a two-stage thing. Plywood first, get your shape, get it right, get it so you know you're right before you cut your furniture board. Because your furniture board is like 150 quid a sheet. You know, your plywood is like pence a sheet so we're a bit further on now so lights are in at the top bed is in bulkheads are in lockers are in gas lockers in water supply is in electric system is going in, and he's doing a fantastic job of that. So, getting there with that. Windows are in. Windows are in. Carpeted, double seat is out. And waiting for a single seat conversion to go into there. Decided to leave the yellow handle on. Overhead locker is in and padded out with like a Bentley stitch uh, padded. Roof is in, also padded with a nice uh, white uh, leather material. Uh, skylight is in. Water services are in. Electrics are through. Electrics are waiting up there uh, for the control panel. Kitchen locker is in. Sockets in for the switch and the TV. That's going to go up there. That needs to be tiled. Toilets in, showers in. Wall is tiled. Electric fan in. And cable waiting for the LED light for the bathroom also. That's all winding currently. 
and then that's obviously where our max fan goes so yeah bed I'm getting there so thanks everyone and please subscribe like share and comment and i hope you look forward to stage three of my building of the camper van and that is coming soon